children of Israel, remember how I preferred you above all the nations. And I would say the same thing to the Ishmaelites. O oh, children of Ishmael, remember how I preferred you above all the worlds. God always judges and then he replaces. He did this with the Canaanites. He did this with the Egyptians. He did this with the Israelites. And now he is doing this with the Ishmaelites. The prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him. He split the moon. And that is going into a dual meaning. He split his kingdom. And he had to split his kingdom because the kingdom did not fully belong to him. You see, the prophet Muhammad was given us the Quran only for a temporary time. And then the Mahdi, to whom right it belongs, had to get his book back. And that's the real deal about the Quran. You see, Allah revealed to me that the Quran was my book. It's my book. And that book was returned back to me now. And I have that book. The Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him. He was a prophet of Allah. He was a good steward. He chose for his nation to be a poor kingdom so that he wouldn't take the glory of Solomon. And Solomon, Solomon is going into the Mahdi, or how y'all say it, the Mahdi. And he split the kingdom. This is the reason why Bilal, Rabbi, he prayed first. He did the Adan first. And the first will be the last, and the last will be the first. The original owner of the nation of Islam is the Mahdi. That is his religion. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed to me that Islam is my religion. Islam is Lamantis. It's my religion. And now I am here. And he has entrusted me to clean up this house. He's entrusted me to clean up this earth. And to fill it with equity. Fill it with righteousness. And to fill it with true justice. And I am here to complete that task. Now, you guys had your prophet. The prophet Mohammed came. Now it's our turn. The Mahdi is here, and I am Al Mahdi, El Lamanti, Lamanti Clay. Okay, my dad name was Monty Brooks, and if you go to Samuel, you'll read how David picked up the stones from the brook, and the Prophet Muhammad had to return that mantle back to where it belonged. It belonged to the real Bilal. And I have scriptures today. We're going to get some more evidence. First, I want to hit you with one that you are familiar with. Remember, in the Quran, God formed Adam from the clay. And Adam is going into the Mahdi. Because you can spell Mahdi with Adam. You can't pay attention to the letters. You got to pay attention to the sounds. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has taught Adam. He's taught the Mahdi how to use words. He's taught me how to spell. He's taught me the Gospels. He's teaching me all these things. I have no teacher but him. And God formed Adam from the mud. He's trying to show you Arabians that the Mahdi or the Mahdi is black. He's brown. God formed Adam. He formed the Mahdi from the dust of the ground. That's how he formed him. And he is a black man. Okay. This is seen in Song of Solomon, chapter 1. In chapter 5, it brings up your prophet, the prophet Muhammad. It brings him up. Okay. That scripture 
is not null and void. You respect that scripture because it mentions your prophet. And it's the same thing in Song of Solomon 1. I am the Mahdi and the vineyard belongs to me. And a lot of people are angry because the Mahdi is black. Okay, he's black. And the tents of Qadar belong to a black man. It's about time we mature and it's about time we grow up. Allah has been witness and he's seen your racism. He's seen how you got this deep-seated hatred for the black man, for black people. It is seen in the Arabian woman. It is seen in the Arabian daughter. It is seen in the Arabian man. And I'm just telling the truth. Not all of them are like that. There, there are a few. There are a few. But Allah has been witness against you. And that kingdom did not fully belong to you. What is so amazing is Allah has rose up the Mahdi. He is here and he is here to be your Mahdi. You're going to have issues. You're going to have all type of problems simply because the Mahdi, how y'all say it, Mahdi, he is the deliverer of the Arabs. Yes, he is. He is your ruler. He is your Leader, now let's deal with this hypocrisy. Your scholars say the Hadiths in the Quran is employed in figurative language, such as metaphors, matanity, senekodiki, silamis, and proverbs. They are not to be taken literally all the time. You can't take everything literal. Like for instance, there is no such verse in the Quran where Allah forbids music. They look through these little verses that are vague and then they pull something out of it. The Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him, he was not the father to any of you. He also was not the supervisor to any of you. That is the Mati's job. The Monty's job is to clean up this house. And Monty's job, yes, I'm here. Le Monty's job is to clean up this house. He is on another level. He's on another scale than the Prophet Muhammad. Now, I know I just lost a whole audience because simply people idolize the prophets. The Prophet Muhammad was simply a prophet of Allah, he was a messenger, just like Jesus. But the Mahdi is the stone that the builders rejected and the kingdom belongs to him. The ruler of the Arabians today is a black man. Okay, you just got to deal with it. I'm going to show you some more in the scripture. Now let's deal with your hypocrisy. In Deuteronomy 18 and 18, it reads, I will raise them up a prophet from among their brethren like unto thee. Now, he's talking to the Israelites. But we in Islam, we interpret that as the prophet Muhammad, which is another nation. Okay, so he's literally using the word brethren. Okay, some people want to use countrymen. But bottom line this is speaking to the Israelites, but see, Allah, he loves doing metaphors. He went from talking about the Israelites to talking about an Ishmaelite. And that's exactly what he did in the Haiti when he talked about the Mahdi, when he talked about he would be from his stock that is going into the house of the prophethood, that is going into the mantle. The prophet Muhammad was in a mantle. I'm in the same mantle. Moses was in the same mantle. We are the prophets of Allah. Okay. Now, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told me today that the Quran was my book. And I was the Rasulu of the Quran. And it was my book. And that the prophet Muhammad was holding it down for me but he had to return it 
to his rightful owner. That's how Allah broke it down to me. Just think of this. Let's say you leave something at somebody's house and then you say, I'm going to come back for it. And then you come back for it when your kids are there and your kids don't want to give you something that was supposed to be returned. That's exactly what's going on right now in the nation of Ishmael. The Ishmaelites do not want to return the kingdom and they don't want to accept a black Mahdi. That's what we're dealing with right now. But Allah will prevail. And I will be the ruler of the Arabians. Think of it like this. You got a woman. And this woman used to be with somebody else. But now she has to come back to you. Okay. And you have to deal with all of the garbage and everything that came with that first husband that's exactly what's going on right now in the spiritual realm the arabians do not want to receive a black monty that's why god is all over you right now okay and you better not let your wife hear this because we're going to see who loves the prophet muhammad or not because you cannot say you love the prophet muhammad if you do not love the monty it's that simple. You can't say you love Allah if you don't love his messengers. And that's what we're dealing with right here in the nation of Ishmael. I am here to tell the truth. Now, Bilal was a picture of the Mahdi. Yes, he was. He was a picture of me. Now, I'm going to show you something in the scriptures, the Hebrew scriptures is where the truth is also. And your imams have failed you because they fail to realize that the Quran confirms the Hebrew scriptures. And it tells us that the glory of Qadar shall fail. And it tells us that the children of Qadar shall be diminished. It's telling you that that pride you have in your race is going to diminish. Why? Because the kingdom was split. The prophet Muhammad split the moon. He shared the kingdom with a black man because it belonged to the Mahdi in the first place. Just like Adam was the first man who was created and he was created out of clay. My last name. He was created out of the dust of the ground. The Arabians... Y'all have a ruler and he's black. Okay. You're just going to have to deal with it. And I'm going to show you some more. Okay. So keep that in mind. The Hebrew scriptures, the prophet Isaiah, the prophet Isaiah, you can spell Isa in his name. The prophet Isaiah told you that the children of Kadar is going to diminish. And he tells you that the glory of Kadar shall fail. Now there's more prophecies there's there's more burdens now a burden is a prophecy there's more prophecies against the nation of ishmael there's good news and there's bad news for everybody everybody gets it and they ignore the hebrew scriptures because your imams know that there's judgments in there such as the judgments y'all experiencing right now in gaza it's all prophesied okay Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is swift in reckoning. Now let's deal with 2 Samuel 11 and 1. And it came to pass after the year was expired at the time when kings go forth to battle that David sent Joab and his servants with him and all Israel and they destroyed the children of Ammon and besieged Rabbah. Now, Rabbah is going into the Arabs, okay? But David tarried still at Jerusalem. So the children of Ammon is going into the Christian church because Ammon represents teacher. And Paul has been the best teacher, so-called best teacher in Christianity. His counsel was like the counsel of God. He was like a Hithopel, 
Okay. And they besieged Reba or Raba. And that's going into the Arabs. There's coming a day when the Arabs will be besieged. You guys will be under the Mahdi. One way or the other. Now let's go to verse 2. And it came to pass in an evening time that David arose from off his bed and walked upon the roof of the king's house. Now this is a picture of Bilal on top of the Kaaba. Okay, now watch this. And from the roof he saw a woman washing herself, and the woman was very beautiful to look upon. And David sent and inquired after the woman, and one said, Is not this Bathsheba? Bathsheba represents the nation of Islam. Get it? She's taking a bath. She's performing ritual washings, wudu, and all the above. This is a picture of a clean religion. And David took her. A black man just took this Arabian nation right here in the Bible. This is the reason why your imams stay away from the Bible. They, they stay away from the Bible. Why? Because they don't want to give the kingdom back to Bilal. Okay. The man who woke you up. This is the man that woke you up to pray. And I am the Mahdi and I am here to wake you up. Verse 3. And David sent and inquired after the woman. And one said, Is not this Bathsheba, the daughter of Eliam, the wife of Uriah, the Hittite, that's y'all. That's y'all. Here we have in the scripture a black man taking the nation of Islam in a metaphor. Now, I want to show you something else. Moses was from the tribe of Levi. Joshua was from the tribe of Ephraim. So the kingdom went from one nation to another nation. Moses had no successor. The prophet Muhammad had no successors. Okay. The prophet Muhammad had no one to succeed him. And that's where y'all differ because some of y'all believe he did. But no, he did not leave no successor. Why? Because the kingdom was going to Bilal. This is the main reason why the prophet Muhammad split the moon. He kept it real. He split the kingdom with the black man. The white man has had his turn to shine. The Arabian man, y'all had your time to shine. Y'all had your prophet. Why won't you allow the black nation to have their prophet and to have their turn to shine? What's wrong with you? Okay, that racism has got to go. It has no place in Islam. Okay, that stuff has to go. The hatred that you have for the black man has to go. And I'm talking to the ones who deal with it, not the ones who keep it real. Okay, now going on. Let's go to Joshua chapter 2 and verse 1. And Joshua, the son of Nun, sent out of Shittim. See, brown people, black people, shit. That's how y'all look at us, okay? You should see what we get when we walk out the door sometimes. Y'all give us some dirty looks simply because we black and you feel like you better than us and you know it. Stop playing games. Even if you ain't the one that's doing that, you know your people be doing that. Stop playing games. Stop lying. You know Allah knows and we all know and Allah has been witness. He's been witness. Now going on. Saying, go view the land, even Jericho. And they went and came into an harlot's house or prostitute. Named Rahab. Uh-oh. You can spell Arab in Rahab. And lodged there. So there's two men. Let's keep going. And it was told the king of Jericho, saying, behold, there came men in hither. Tonight of the children of Israel to search out the country. And the king of Jericho sent unto Rahab, saying, Bring forth the men that are come to thee, which are entered into thine house, for they be come 
to search out all the country. And the woman took the two men and hid them and said, Thus there came men unto me, but I wist or I knew not whence they were. And that's exactly what the Arabians are doing today. They are hiding the true testimony of Bilal. They're hiding the true Mahdi. He's black. Okay, they don't want to accept the fact that the Mahdi is black. And that's why on the roof, just like Bilal was praying on top of the roof, they're hiding the two men. Because when the Prophet Muhammad said he would be of my household and he was of my stock, he was speaking in a type and shadow metaphor. He was basically telling you that Bilal was the first person to pray and the last one will be his type and shadow, which is the Mahdi. There's two men hiding on top of the Kaaba right now. Okay. Bilal is a picture of the Mahdi. That's why we have all these movies out. The book of Eli, you can spell Bilal. Okay. If you use the words for how it sounds, you can spell Bilal in the book of Eli. Okay, Denzel Washington in that movie was a Muslim. You can see the Quran on the bookshelf with the Bible. He was reading the Bible in Braille, showing you that the real Mahdi will be just like Bilal. He will be black. And it's the truth. It is the real truth. Why are you being racist? Okay, we're going to see who loves Allah or who doesn't. Allah is not talking to you. Allah is talking to me. He's not dealing with you in any type of way. How are you going to be praying five times a day in the presence of Allah? But you can't tell that the Mahdi is here. You can't tell that the kingdom is about to be black and brown. And that the ruler of the Arabians is black. What's wrong with you? Okay, God's laughing at you. Allah is laughing at you. He gave us many characters such as Bill Cosby. Think of Bill Cosby. Bill Cosby is the man who is famous for the jello. The jello. And if you paid attention to the song that I did, I said, y'all mad, y'all jello. I'm playing it real quick right now. Y'all mad, y'all jello. Okay, that's a black term for you being mad. If I'm saying you jello, I'm saying you mad. And I said this way back in 2016. Before I was in Islam, I've always been Muslim always been Muslim and I've already seen it way back then okay I told you you jello you mad you mad you angry why because the kingdom is leaving you and is going to your neighbor who is better than you it's going to Bilal it's going to the Mahdi okay the prophet Muhammad peace and blessings be upon him he came as a servant, he didn't come as a father. He didn't come as a supervisor. But the Mahdi, he will take the mantle from Paul and he will clean up his father's house. Okay? He is coming in a greater anointing. The anointing that is on the Mahdi is the anointing to completely replenish the earth and to rid this world of evil okay the Mahdi is on a whole nother level than the prophet Muhammad peace and blessings be upon him that's why he's not mentioned in the Quran why because it's his book and his book is being returned so I just showed you right there in the book of Joshua okay two men hiding on the roof in Shittim then I just showed you how David Snatched up his Arabian wife. 
Okay, there's coming a day, whether you like it or not, that a black man will be the ruler of the nation of Islam. This is the reason why y'all hate the FOI. Y'all don't like the black Muslims that are here in America. Louis Farrakhan and Allah already gave me words for him. I ain't going to even go over it right now. Okay. Right now, I love my brother. Okay. And y'all don't like them. But the reason why God had to keep a mantle over here so that you can know that we got some ownership. We got ownership. The prophet Muhammad was cool. Okay. He shared the kingdom. He split the kingdom. Okay. Just like in the days of Solomon. For those who study the Bible, you will know that Solomon's kingdom was split. That splitting anointing is with the Solomons. And the prophet Muhammad split the moon because he had to give the kingdom back to the black man. And that is the real truth. I know you sour. I know you jello. But we're going to keep it going. We're going to keep it going. I got so much more in the Bible. Adam, the first man, was formed from the clay. He was formed from the clay. And I'm still dealing with y'all. I'm still dealing with y'all. I'm playing with y'all. Y'all won't even let me talk to your imams. Okay? Y'all need to cut that out. I'm going to ask you a question. What is the punishment for disrespecting the messenger of Allah? You tell me the punishment for disrespecting the messenger of Allah. You tell me. Okay, because I'm holding you accountable, you playing games. How are you going to be sitting up there talking about you praying to the one and only true God and you can't feel that the Mahdi is here? Okay, Allah is giving me everything I'm giving you right now. Everything. This stuff is going to explode is going to explode and we're going to hold everybody accountable. That's why if you don't have nothing good to say, just don't say it, brother. Just I'm telling you, I'm telling you, I'm telling you. If you don't have anything good to say, shut up. Don't say nothing. OK, because we have to make an example. OK, the Monty is here. Lamonti is here. Okay. My dad is Monty. His name is Monty Brooks. Okay. The stone by the brooks that David picked up to take down Goliath to go after that Philistine or that Palestinian is the same thing. Okay. Allah's talking to me. He's not talking to you. He wants you to get rid of your racism. And he wants you to receive your black Mahdi. Okay, that's the truth. I'm just going to set it right there. Assalamu alaikum to my brothers and sisters in the real truth.